We're going to go through effort key number 13. This is on equilibrium. Uh, this one is a calculation-based problem. So if you would like to try the problem first, in the description you'll find a link to this problem. Uh, and you can go ahead and try it and then come back and check the solution, or you can watch me do it here. So here we go. So lots of information at the beginning. We'll start by kind of breaking that down, and then we'll look at the first question. So we have an oddly shaped 4-liter container. So we have our volume. It's filled with a certain number of moles of hydrogen gas and moles of chlorine gas. And the mixture undergoes this following reaction, and we get an equilibrium set. Okay. So be clear there, this should be the style arrow. Uh, and then it says after we get to equilibrium, there's 1.4 moles of hydrochloric acid present. Write the equilibrium expression casing. So lots of information here, most of which we're not going to get into until later. So for the K expression, all I really need is the chemical reaction. So I'm going to start with that. My K expression is just going to be the products over the reactants. So I have one product, hydrochloric acid. And the 2, I'm going to use as the superscript for the exponent. And then on the denominator, I have hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. Just like this. Okay, so that's all I need to do for that first part. Uh, and in the second part, I assume I probably need some more of this information. It might be a little more challenging. So part B, figure out the numerical value of Kc. Again, let's edit that. Okay. So if I want the numerical value of this, I think let me get rid of this whole thing. Let's start that over again. So once the numerical value of Kc, and I'm going to rewrite this so I have a little more room. So I need to figure out at equilibrium how much hydrochloric acid I have, how much hydrogen I have, and how much chlorine I have. It tells me some information about that. It tells me how much I start with of the two gases. And it tells me how much I end with of the product. So what I'm going to do to figure that out is I'm going to do what's called a face chart or a rice chart, where I have a reaction here, the initial amounts, how much they change by, and the equilibrium amounts. This is what I want to know to plug into this expression. At equilibrium, how much do I have? Initially, I start with 3.2 moles of hydrogen in a 4 liter container. That is 0.8 moles. All the values that go in here are all going to be in concentration molarity. Okay, so don't just put your moles in there. Make sure that you take your moles and use your liters to figure that out. 2.4 moles of chlorine gas. 2.4 divided by 4 is 0.6. And that just tells me how much hydrochloric acid I have at the end. Usually then we can assume that there is zero to begin. Okay. And that does tell me I have 1.4 moles present at the end. 1.4 divided by 4 is 0.35. So this is what the problem tells me. In addition to that, by knowing the chemical reaction, I know the proportionalities of their changes. So I don't know how much each thing is changing by, except for this. But I do know that for every one of these and one of these that gets reacted, it's going to produce two of these. So I'm going to use up so much of this and so much of this, but I'm going to make double that amount for this one. So by knowing the initial and final amounts of the hydrochloric acid, I can figure out what x is, how much these things change by. This step is your kind of stoichiometry. The difference between this and a normal stoichiometry problem is that a normal stoichiometry problem, you would use up all of the chlorine. It would go 0.6 minus 0.6 and go to zero. In an equilibrium, we're going to end up with some of each thing left. So instead, we don't really know where we're going to draw off until we get to here and we can figure out how much that has changed by. So our x is equal to 0.175, which means that this is going to be 0.625 at equilibrium, and this is going to be 0.425. So I now know my equilibrium concentrations of all three gases, and I can plug those into this expression to solve for k going to be 0.35 squared over 0.625 times 0.425. So I'm taking these values and plugging these into the k expression, and that gives me my k value, which I have figured out previously to be 0.461. Okay? Alright, so in the next part, in part 
C, same question, setup, but for part C it says, what's the value of KP? Okay, so I have KC in concentration, the equilibrium constant. For pressure, there's an equation to convert that. However, given the fact that this is 2 moles of gas turning into 2 moles of gas, or 2 molecules of gas turning into 2 molecules of gas, my, my delta N, okay, KC times RT, uh, and it's either delta N or negative delta N, I can't remember which at the moment. Um, P, I think it's delta N for this one. Um, anyway, this is the change in molecules of gas. And so since I start with 2 and end with 2, then my delta N is going to be 0. And anything raised to the 0th power is 1. So my KP will equal my KC. So my answer for the second part, for part C, is that my KP in this particular reaction is also equal to KC, and it would also be 0.461. Okay, moving on from there to part D. Now we're restarting and we have some new information, so I'm going to go ahead and clear up a lot of this board. So now it says we start with one mole of each gas in a one liter volume container. Figure out the value of Q. So Q is, is the same thing as K, it's just that we don't know whether or not this particular reaction is at equilibrium or not. So I'm going to plug in the same ratios of chemicals, but I don't know if this is at equilibrium. I don't know that the rates of the forward and the reverse are the same. Okay. So to solve for Q, I'm just really going to plug these in. Um, now I have one mole of each gas in a one liter container, so I have a one molar concentration for each of these three things. So I get one squared over one times one, which equals one. So Q is one. And that's all it asks me to do for part D, determine the value of Q. Then, in part E, it asks me to interpret that which reaction rate occurs faster initially, the forward reaction or the reverse reaction. What that's driving at is that's saying if Q is greater than your equilibrium constant. Remember, our equilibrium constant from part B was 0.461, I believe. So our Q is larger than K. That means that currently, we are not at equilibrium. We do not have equal rates. One of the rates must be faster than the other. If we evaluate that further, because Q is too big, that means that we have too much product and too little reactant. That's how we would interpret that. And in terms of rates, what that means, if we have too much of this and too little of this, that means that my forward rate is going to be slower and my reverse rate is going to be faster. Because having too much product is leading to more collisions and a faster kinetics, a faster reaction rate, and so therefore I have to uh, which reaction rate occurs faster, it would be the reverse occurs faster due to higher concentration of product than I would see at equilibrium. Now that will naturally work itself out because if the reverse rate is faster than the forward rate, what's going to happen is I'm going to make more reactants and make not as much product. So this is gradually going to increase in concentration, which is going to make this speed up. And this is going to be losing concentration. This is going to start to slow down until those two rates become equal. So then in part F, it says determine the equilibrium concentrations of all gases. Okay, so right now we know that Q is larger than K. Okay, that means that we're going to shift to the left, we're going to make more reactants, we're going to use up some product, even though both reactions are still going on. We're going to do an ice chart again. So we are starting with one molar, one molar, one molar. And the Q being bigger than K, what that does is that tells you whether to lose x or gain x, lose 2x or gain 2x. We're going to be shifting to the left, so we're going to lose some of our product, net. We're going to gain some reactants, net. So we're going to have 1 plus x, 1 plus x, and 1 minus 2x 
at equilibrium. Okay. We know our equilibrium constant from before. That was the 0.461. And that's equal to this concentration squared okay, over the 1 plus x for the hydrogen times the 1 plus x for the chlorine. Okay. So what I could do from there is I can say, well, these are the same thing. This is really 1 plus x squared. And I can take that 0.461. And I can square root this whole thing. If I square root the whole thing, I'm going to end up with 0.679 is equal to 1 minus 2x over 1 plus x. And from there, I want to rearrange and I want to solve for x. So I'm going to start this in a new color to give me a little more room. So I'm going to have 0.679 plus 0.679x. By distributing this over here, equals 1 minus 2x. Okay? And then I'm going to take my 2x over to here to get 2.679x. And I'm going to take my 0.679 over here to get 0.321. Okay? And that gives me an x of. 0.1198. So we'll call that 0 0.120. Okay? So what that means is that at equilibrium, I'm going to have 1 plus x, or 1.120 of hydrogen, 1.120 of chlorine, and I'm going to have 1 minus 2x, so I'm going to have 0.76 of the hydrochloric acid. Okay. So it looks as though I'm missing the final part of this, but in part G it says construct a graph showing rate versus time and concentration versus time for this particular substance. So I need this 0 0.120 to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and do our rates over here. And for the rates, we don't actually know exactly what the rates are, but we're going to kind of draw just a graph to give us an idea of what they are. What we do know is we do know that the reverse rate started out higher than the forward rate. And then what's going to happen is that is going to decline until we get to equilibrium where it's going to level off. For the forward, we again don't know where it is, but we know that as we make more and more of the reactants, that rate is going to increase until we get to a certain point where it levels up. Where the rates become equal, and they stop changing, this point forward we are at equilibrium. Before that point, we are where Q is greater than K. And Q gradually gets smaller and smaller until it equals K at that particular point. That's what's going on with the rates. If we look at what's going on with the concentrations, we actually know some numbers here. So for concentration versus time, we know that everything starts at 1. So here's 1. So we know that HCl starts at 1, but then it's going to gain 2x to go up to 1.24. So we're going to see this go up like this, and then level off. For the H2 and the Cl2, we know that it starts at 1, but then it loses 0.120. It's going to go down to 0.88. And so we're starting at 1, and then it's going to drop. And again, we see that at a certain point where the lines level off, from that point forward, we're at equilibrium. And before that point, we're where Q is greater than K. So that would be how you would construct a response for part G.